Now, private equity is a huge topic that's emerging for all of us, and I know it's something that residents and fellows are faced with, and what suggestions or tips do you have for new people looking for jobs who are faced with this private equity yeah, issue? So, so PE is certainly the elephant in the room yes. these days. Um, so it does change the, uh, the negotiating process a bit. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would consider is when you're looking in a certain area, figure out if private equity is pervasive in that area okay. and if it is consolidating practices so you know whether or not to really bring that up in discussions uh, mm -hmm. when you're talking to your practices. If it's not there yet, then it's still a good idea to have a discussion with the, the leaders of the practice mm -hmm. to find out what their intentions are, if they think they might be selling. They might or might not be completely honest with you, but it can also lead to a discussion about maybe a clause in your contract in the event of a sale. Perhaps you can figure out a, a, an equity deal and not feel like you were left behind. Okay. Uh, if it is already present, uh, especially if it's in the practice that you're looking to join, mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage you to try and have a really honest conversation with the doctor leaders of your practice and also mm -hmm. try and get a uh, uh, face-to-face with the private equity leaders of the practice because that will really give you a, a good idea about what type of leadership and vision they have for the practice. Right. Are they looking to just build, 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 make a ton of money and offload it and they're not really caring as much for the physicians? Or do they really have a, a clear vision for where the practice can go and what the role for the, uh, the young physicians will be? Uh, I am in a unique, unique position of being a yo who was in a practice uh, that was on a traditional partnership track that suddenly switched over to a not so traditional oh, wow. private equity practice, okay. um, which like many of us, I was very skeptical about. Mm -hmm. um, but I was able to sit with the, the physician leaders as well as the private equity leaders of the practice. And we did figure out a way to make sure that the young ophthalmologists in our practice had the opportunity to become equity partners. Um, and it turns out that it's been overwhelmingly positive because whereas in a traditional partnership track, in most cases, you're investing a lot of money up front. Mm -hmm. So you're taking on additional debt after you're trying to get out of your debt from medical school still. Um, you do, you know, typically the, the collections would go up. You'd be making more money while you're paying down that debt. But at the end, as senior partners retire, you also have to buy them out. So there, there are a lot of things that you don't consider until you're confronted with these decisions. Whereas in the private equity model, assuming you have a nice equitable mm -hmm. practice and they want everyone to be a part of it and growing and investing it together, um, it's a much lower capital expense mm -hmm. to become an equity partner with a very high upside because there's an opportunity for multiple sales down the line where you would benefit even in the short term, whereas you know in a traditional partnership, you're waiting years until you bring on another junior um, partner and you take their money and you know it's kind of a, a cycle like that. Right. So you have these uh, sale events that can happen every five years or so, and the income that you receive from that, something you, we don't think about because we're doctors, not necessarily uh, private equity investors, mm -hmm is that it's taxed as capital gains rather than regular income. Mm -hmm. So you actually get more of that money yeah. as well. So you get kind of a, a flash business education when you're kind of getting into this world. Sure. And it's still a risk, it's still an investment. Mm -hmm. You know, We don't know exactly where this is gonna go, but you can look at other fields where private equity has been around for 10 plus years, mm -hmm. like dermatology, radiology, mm -hmm. dentistry, where all of these things have happened and have happened successfully. So it's a calculated risk. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have good partners and a private equity group that really supports the young ophthalmologist, it could be a very positive experience. That's great. That's mm -hmm. really helpful information. Wonderful. Sure. And Dr. Klingman, for the last bit here, do you have any other tips for residents or fellows who are starting the job search, heading out into the real world? Absolutely. So I've always found it very gratifying and helpful to be involved in organized medicine. So I've been involved in the New York State Ophthalmological Society since residency wow. and have a lot of fun now organizing YO activities in New York. Um, and I've also become involved in the Long Island Ophthalmologic Association, which is a smaller group in my area. Cool. Um, and it really allows for you to get to know the other doctors that are outside of your practice in your yes. area who are you know, mutual referral sources. Mm -hmm. um, and it also, of course, gives you an opportunity to advocate for your profession. Fantastic. Okay. And then most importantly is always practice in an ethical way and take care of every patient that walks through your door. 
and that's how you'll build a, uh, a reputation and uh, a practice. Wonderful advice. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure.